Giving your life to Christ is more of a fact thing than than emotional thing. Did you get it? When we give our life to Christ, the most we had, we were supposed to be giving uh, terms and agreement, conditions, so that we we'll go home. This is not a rash decision. Are you getting me? Do you know if I will say this? Some people may not accept it. They may not agree with me. Giving your life to Christ is more of a fact thing than than emotional thing. Did you get it? Giving your life to Christ has to do more with what? A factual reality than emotional reality. One of the greatest problems we have is that a lot of people give their life to Christ based on what? Emotions. Not based on fact. Uh, giving our life to Christ must be based on what? Fact. Because this, this decision requires to meet certain terms and agreement. It's very factual. It's not based on emotion. So a lot of people would give their life to Christ based on emotion. Now, when the factual side of it comes to play, they what? They cringe. Is that not correct? They run. You can see very clearly in our Lord's dealing with the, with the holy apostles, one of the things God, sorry, uh, well, God, God the Son, one of the things our Lord Jesus never shied away from is to continually impress on the early disciples of what? The facts of their decisions. When I say fact, I mean the consequences of their decision. That's one thing Jesus never stopped emphasizing to them. That's one thing the apostle never stopped emphasizing when the Holy Church started. They meet every Sunday from house to house. What were they doing? Reminding each other. They were not meeting to hear something new. They were meeting to do what? Remind each other of the laws, the terms, the agreement of this new way of life. They call it the way of the way. Reminding each other. And that's why you even see Paul in most of his writing to the, to the churches in Galatia and in Ephesians and Coloss and all this place. What was he doing? Reminding them of the facts of, their new, of, the, of the way they have chosen to live. And one of the facts of the way is that what? You will be persecuted because men hated light and loved darkness. Bible clearly says it. If the world loves you, it's because what? Aha. You are one of them. And, and subconsciously, if you are going to be honest, I will not seek in the love of the world. Subconsciously, if you are going to be honest with yourself, are we not seeking the love of the world? We are. Now, there is a great battle how can you pursue after righteousness and still gain the love of the world? Think about it for a second. Are you getting it? It's impossible. It's impossible. So, do, that's why the, Jesus is saying now, if you come to that conclusion and accept, this is it. You cannot gain the love of the world. I'm just, this, it's, just, it's just what it is. It's just what it is. You cannot. You cannot gain the love of the world. It's not possible. Because your deeds, your action, your pursuit, your speech, everything you do is doing what? Is giving them out. Is revealing them. As a matter of fact, they will stop calling your phone. They will stop talking to you. They don't want to be your friends. Because why? Every time you speak with them, you may not necessarily attack them. But what you are saying is attacking them. You don't mean to attack them. Are you getting it? You do not mean to attack them. But what you are saying. Because when you become a Christian, you become a follower of Christ. Your life flows from Christ. Your life flows from Christ. 
And as you are speaking from Christ, because the word you are speaking are truth, what happens? Anyone that is in the lie will be what? Offended. They will be hurt. They will be offended. And once that happens, what is going to happen? They will not like you. Because men hated light and love darkness. 